what I want to talk a little bit about is the health. And I'm going to be showing a series of videos. But I want you to know my thoughts on how health, good health, is acquired. Okay, now the first thing you have to know is whatever you're told, you have to ask why. Go by their explanation. If it's simple and easy to understand, this person may know what they're talking about. If they start getting it complicated, that tells you that they probably don't know what they're talking about and they're trying to bullshit their way through the situation. So uh, try to go by uh, what sounds sensible and use your common sense. Uh, one thing I've learned, nobody's that smart. Uh, no matter what, you can break it down simple enough where it's understandable. The medical field, they believe that uh, wellness is the lack of sickness. Okay, now the, the way the body works, we've, we all have a good, healthy body. What we've done to our body is what makes, what makes sickness and disease happen. As long as your body has nutritional blood in it, uh, whatever problems you have, your body should be able to correct uh, whatever little problems happen. This explains why, uh, why some people in the household, you think everybody would get sick. But you, you just be somebody that doesn't get sick. Well, that's because that one person is doing something to take care of themselves, in which the other ones have not. So they've, if they got a virus, if they got good, strong, uh, clean, nutritional blood in them, the virus wouldn't have anything to take hold, and you just go right through you. But the ones that uh, aren't doing things right, uh, they will catch the virus. It's the same thing on every sickness and, and every disease. It has to go, it has to get started someplace. But if you can keep everything good inside you, then it uh, has a really hard time getting started. That's why uh, most of my uh, patients, I suggest uh, 6,000 vitamin C a day. And that's uh, 2,000 vitamin C with each meal. You pretty much have to have the vitamin C uh, uh, when you eat because vitamin C is just an acid and all it's doing is cleaning your blood vessels to make sure you get good circulation and uh, the acid helps break down all the, the, the cells and all the stuff that's in the blood and it makes it easier for the nutrition to uh, get absorbed in the blood and be able to get to the different parts of the body, the circulation part. So, uh, so that's why I suggest so much vitamin C. A lot of times I hear people say, uh, well, it's inherited. What I have is inherited. Uh, this is another one of those myths that um, uh, it doesn't quite work like that. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't, but the chances are yeah, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, what it normally is, is shared bad habits. Yeah, the, your family shares in the food, shares in the breathing, you know, uh, or the, the lifestyle, you know, and that's why they all get the same thing. An example is blood pressure. In my family, uh, all the males uh, have had high blood pressure and then they end up dying in their uh, late, uh, I mean, uh, early to uh, middle 60s. Uh, and it usually starts in their early 50s. And uh, I'm, I'm no exception. Uh, that part we do agree with. My uh, father, uncle, and brother, um, uh, all of us started the high blood pressure at, uh, in the early 50s. Uh, the difference is I didn't take any medication. Uh, I, I did a lot of tea, uh, changed my eating habits. Uh, I did a lot of stuff. And to tell you the truth, it didn't work. I still have high blood pressure. Uh, let's see, today has been one of my higher ones. I was uh, like 167 uh, over uh, 113. Uh, normally I'll run about 150 over 100. Uh, that's my normal, 
And uh, every once in a while, if I do too good of a job on taking care of my blood pressure, I'll get it down to about 120, 125, over 80, something like that. And when that happens, I'm real tired. I mean, a lot of fatigue. Uh, I'm usually ready to take a nap. And what I do uh, at that time, I check my blood pressure, I see I'm low. What I do is I'll take some salt, uh, put some salt underneath my tongue, and then my blood pressure will raise, and then I'm feeling good. So I feel good as long as I'm, I'm up there a little bit high. Now, all, everybody, all the males, they took medication. They ended up uh, having kidney problems, and then... Uh, um, you know, once you have kidney problems, it just starts getting worse and worse, and then strokes and series of strokes, and and then um, I say so. They, after a long period of suffering, years of suffering, then they finally die. Okay, uh, so far I'm doing really good, and um, I say I'm out motorcycle riding. I do uh, a lot of combat, so you know I, I stay uh, kind of happy and and active. Uh, so I'm not saying I'm not going to die soon. I'm just saying that I'm not going to do no suffering. I'm just going to just do what I can and I don't fight the high blood pressure. It's not inherited. What I did is didn't share in uh, their lifestyle. Uh, like I say, I stopped eating a lot of dairy stuff. Uh, I really cut back on meat. I was a meat and potato man and uh, cut back on that and uh, a lot more vegetables and fruit. And, uh, I drink much more water than I used to. And uh, uh, I don't watch TV. They like to watch a lot of TV, sit around and watch TV. I'm, I'm out doing things, so I don't have time for that. So uh, what I'm saying is you just because you think it's inherited or somebody told you it was inherited doesn't mean it was inherited. So uh, uh, use your own mind and figure out what you think uh, you can do to correct uh, your health before you get sick. Another thing I like is the cholesterol. I, I have so many people uh, I have to fight with on their cholesterol. For some reason, uh, the medical world believes when your cholesterol, now I'm not saying, when it gets too high, then you need to do something. Now I'm saying like maybe 400, something like that, you know, I mean, that's high, okay, but uh, you, you know, two or 300, I, I wouldn't be that worried, okay, the reason is, is uh, the liver produces cholesterol, okay, and if you notice, whenever you're taking cholesterol medicine, you have to start taking a blood test every month, because they're checking your liver to see if they've damaged your liver yet, so right there tells me I'm going to stay away from the the cholesterol medicine if it's going to damage my liver. If there's a chance, I will stop. But I say your liver produces, oh, I'd say probably 70% of the cholesterol. So even if you went no cholesterol, you're still going to be, your, your, your liver will start producing more cholesterol to make up for it. You need the cholesterol. Now we're right back to uh, my high dosages of vitamin C, 6,000 a day, 2,000 on each meal. Uh, the cholesterol itself isn't the problem. The problem is it gets stuck on the sides of the uh, arteries and the blood vessels. Okay, uh, with the high dosages of vitamin C, it's just acid, and this vitamin C keeps the blood or the cholesterol from uh, getting caught on the sides of the vertebra on the side of the uh, arteries. So, in other words. The cholesterol keeps moving. I mean, yes, you're, you're getting all this cholesterol in your body, but it's moving. And it gets filtered out, and it gets thrown out. And then you get more cholesterol coming in. So it's a continual cycle. But like I say, the vitamin C will keep your arteries flexible, so then it's, it's moving. And then like I say, the, vitamin, the cholesterol won't get caught on anything. So there's no buildup. There's no cholesterol to break loose. So that's, that's why I believe uh, the scare on cholesterol is way out of proportion. And uh, I, I don't take a lot of heed in it, especially when you put my liver in jeopardy. There's one rule that cannot be overlooked. 
There's one rule that does work 100% of the time, and that is called the 10% rule. Uh, I learned when I was in the Marines that uh, there's just 10%. Uh, they told us when we were in the Marines that there's 10%. They called them shipbirds. I mean, they just wouldn't take orders. They wouldn't do what they're told, and you couldn't rely on them. That's that 10%. Then later on, I found out 10% of the Marines the, in Vietnam never saw combat, or 10% of the Marines in Vietnam saw combat. The 90% didn't. It took 90% to uh, give the support for the 10%. So, uh, and that 10% just, just continually goes on and on. It just doesn't stop. 10% of the people are bad. 10% uh, um, of the... 10% the, of the stuff that I find in your body that's bad is the cause of the 90% of the symptoms. All these symptoms I find, 90% uh, are symptoms and 10% is the cause. So there is this 10% rule. Uh, you know, they say, well, it's not healthy to smoke. Well, there's people that have smoked their whole lives. Right about 10% of them. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's what I'm saying. This, there's always that 10%. And another thing I've noticed, I'm pretty special. That means I must be one of that 10%. Okay. Now, with that in mind, if I'm part of that 10%, uh, medical medicine uh, is figured on 60 or 70%. They figure 60 or 70% of the people are going to benefit from this. And then the other 30 or 40% are going to have problems. Uh, either they're going to have, well, they're all going to have some sort of problem, but that 30 or 40% are going to, there are going to be more problems and benefits. And seeing I'm part of that 10%, that scares me. So that's why I stay away from, from medicine, unless I take it for a short period of time. In other words, if there's something wrong with me, I take the medicine, I get it fixed, and then I don't have to take the medicine anymore. Uh, but I'll try a lot of stuff before I take the medicine. Uh, so, But anyway, keep in mind the 10%. Okay, uh, another problem we had is for some reason, people think you're supposed to settle for what they offer you. Uh, one of the problems I had with insurance was they were gonna, uh, they would insure me, but they would only give me certain things to take care of my health. And it turned out a lot of those things weren't the things that I wanted. And so that's why I didn't, didn't get along with insurance. And uh, that's a lot of reasons why I don't get along with uh, in the medical uh, uh, community is because it seems like that's the solution to all their problems. They can't think of any other way besides take this pill or let's cut it out. And so uh, I try to be open for more things, other, especially for what I do. I do a lot of stuff, but my stuff is just part of the things that are available. And I try to bring it to people's attention, other things that might be helpful to them. And so keep in mind, uh, when you go to someone, they're just more than likely just going to tell you what it is they've got to offer, and it's going to stop right there. Whether it's insurance, medical, uh, anything, it doesn't make any difference. It's going to stop right there. So be open to more things uh, that can benefit your health. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty open. I'm open to a lot of suggestions. I'm open to, a, uh, uh, to about anything. But the reason I'm open is because I'm not hindered uh, by having a license or a certificate. You realize uh, people with a certificate, there are certain things they have to do to get the certificate. Okay, now once they get the certificate, then they know this much. That's good. But they don't need to know anymore, and the chances are they're not going to learn anymore because this is all they needed for the certificate. Okay, the same thing for a license. 
okay, I want to do this much because my license says this is what I can do. I can't do any more and I can't do any less, but I can do this much. So right there, the license restricts you and the certificate restricts you. For me, that's the main reason why I had to leave the States and move to Central America is uh, we had uh, sickness in the family and I wanted to do options that weren't available uh, under their conditions. And you, they wouldn't give licenses or certificates to the type of stuff that I felt we needed. And so we ended up having to move down here. And like I say, so I'm open to whatever it takes to get healthy. Now, I'll tell you, on my work, once you're sick, I cannot help you. And when I work on people, I look for sickness. If I see sickness, I tell them, I can't, there's nothing I can do. Acupuncture doesn't work if you're sick. Uh, my hoi chi uh, it won't last if you're sick. It gives me misreadings. Uh, it tells me something's not right when it may be or it might be, it might not the other, the other way. So, but like I say, so you have to stay healthy. That's what Hoi Chi is good for, keeping you healthy. I find stuff when it's weak. It's not performing 100%. And then once I find it like that, then I'm able to uh, find out what it is that's causing it. Something you're doing or is it something your body's not working right and uh, making this happen? So that's what I'm saying. I, I, we work together uh, with Hoi Chi to find out why you are not running 100% and then it's up to you to do the lifestyle changes to correct it and to regain your wellness before you get sick.